beard. It's been really on the edge of ten tension here all night. They've been fighting in the bars. Basically, it's to do with the British Light Middleweight Championship. Robert McCracken. 10th of September, Birmingham, 1994. Resorts World Arena. Two incensed mobs brutally attack each other in the stands as our local idols Steve the Viking Foster from Salford and Robert McCracken from Birmingham trade blows in the ring. A night described as the worst riot ever seen at a boxing match was triggered by the feared Zulu Birmingham hooligans launching attacks on outnumbered Vikings fans from Salford. In response, Man United's main firm pulled together and launched a violent counter-attack in the venue described in Tony O'Neill's United Hooligan book, Men in Black. Despite the strength of United's football firm, by the mid-90s, there were plenty of rival contenders for the unofficial title of Britain's worst hooligans. As in the 80s, many of the bigger and more active gangs were at this time to be found outside the top divisions. In particular, the Soul Crew, Cardiff City, the Naughty 40, Stoke City, and the Zulu Warriors, Birmingham City. At the start of 1994-95 to season, Birmingham City were languishing in Division 2, two divisions below United, having been out the top flight for eight years. Their multiracial Zulu mob, however, characterised by their chant of Zulu, Zulu, as they steamed into battle, were undoubtedly one of the most feared around. And in September 1994, they saw an opportunity to attack what they imagined would be some of United's boys. A popular Salford boxer, Steve the Viking Foster, was due to fight Robert McCracken, for the British light middleweight title at the National Exhibition Centre in Birmingham on the undercard of Nigel Benn, world title defence. McCracken, a brummy, was a blue supporter and popular with the Zulus. Foster too had a rowdy and extremely tough following drawn from the housing estates of Salford. Like the boxer, they went by the name the Vikings and had their own chant, taken from the movie of the same name starring Kirk Douglas and Tony Curtis. They were each known to launch burning cars into the Manchester Ship Canal to celebrate Foster's victories. Many were also diehard United fans. It appears that the Zulus planned to return from their match that day at Oxford and ambush the Northern lads inside the arena. The brutal brawl that followed was described as the worst riot ever seen at a British boxing match. Salford Viking. The Salford streets aren't paved with gold. They are paved with dog shit and last night's blood. But somewhere inside every kid from Salford, there's a heart of gold. So when one of our own was fighting for the title, it saw the biggest mass exodus from Salford since the slum clearance. Over 1,100 went, all good lads on the day, but on a bad day, ruthless. Every gang was there, ram raiders, gangsters, football hooligans, with one thing in common, they were from Salford. Two or three coaches went from the Ashley Brook pub, a double-decker from the Weast, others from the Woolpack in Salford Present, the Priory, which was the Vikings' den, the Church Inn, which was the older chaps, all pissheads, but every one of them could fight. In fact, virtually every pub in Salford had a representative heading down the M6 that night. There's always in Salford some kid who doesn't like another kid, but on that night, when everybody came together, it was a formidable sight. We got off the coaches at the NEC, and most split up and headed into Birmingham. No one was together, because we had no inkling of any trouble to come. We got a taxi to some pub, and there were quite a few of the Zulus in there, and it was a bit on top, but we rode it out. They were telling us there was going to be trouble ahead, and how no one fucks about with the Zulus. There was only a few of us, so we had to take it on the chin. We made our way to the arena, and when we got in there, there had already been trouble. A coachload of Nigel Benn supporters had had a bit, a bit of a kicking, and a mob from Leeds had also had a spanking. The Zulus had all come in together, and were mobbed up. They then attacked a Salford lot in the bar who were basically boxing buffs. The boxing buffs were no mugs and had a fight, but they were heavily outnumbered. When we arrived, we didn't know anything about this. Next, there was a second fight, and I'm sure it was the Ashley Brook mob from Liverpool Street in Salford. Same deal again. They were good lads, but boxing fans wouldn't look for trouble. And again, it would be fair to say they were well outnumbered. I'm sure the Zulus did back them off, but they hadn't yet met the Salford hardcore. Then the fight moved to the main arena. He started bullying people and beat up a couple of kids from Salford. The photographers went over taking pictures and the Zulus snatched their cameras. By this time, people from Salford were saying, get together, get to our area, and then we'll see what they've got. The majority still weren't there. The old soul firm hadn't landed. The mob from Weast had been stopped somewhere by police over a broken coach window. Cheatham Hills mob was elsewhere, and the precinct mob were probably out robbing somewhere. No one was together. 
Salford were up in one corner of the arena in the upper tier. The Zulus came across the floor through the temporary seating to attack the main body of the Salford. They had plastic seats and metal brackets. That was the start of the third fight. It was a free-for-all and it was brutal. The stewards weren't worth a wank and just disappeared. There were only about 20 Salford down at the bottom. These 20, led by Mark Redican, God rest his soul, took them on. Boom Boom was there at the front too, throwing punches for fun. And they stood there and held the vanguard, slugging it out toe-to-toe against much greater numbers. Someone shouted, please Salford, go back, over the public address system. But they have now landed. They come over the top of the high tier with one man in particular, Mad Dog, making his mark. Six foot five in hands like a manhole covers. He held a stairwell on his own, banging them for fun. Then the younger factions of the Woolpack mob, Gordy, Foxy, Laney, jumped over and started attacking him from everywhere. We will give Birmingham the first two battles because they were mobbed up and picking on boxing buffs. The third one, they can't deny because it was on television. Salford did them. When Don King came on television later, he said, I could hear the Viking song and I half expected Kirk Douglas to walk down the aisle. The police came, but it carried on big time outside. We settled down to watch the boxing, but now all the Salford had finally arrived and a lot were not very happy about missing the action. They wanted their two penny worth. After the foster fight had finished, he lost on points. The riot police were there, dog handlers and the helicopters was that low outside you could almost touch it. But that didn't stop factions of Salford breaking through and chasing the Birmingham lot outside. Some Salford kids ended up in Winston Green Prison and a couple of them got a bit of a grief about one of the Zulu lads losing an eye. Mad Dog got a prison sentence, as did Mark Redican. That night will be talked about for a long time. So that's a story of the men in black or the Red Army, whatever you want to call them, who attended that with the Salford lads who were backing Steve Foster, Steve the Viking Foster. I remember watching that on television. It was, a Niger, it was on the Niger Ben undercard and it proper kicked off and they were sort of panicking it, ringside the commentators, etc. I'm sure a lot of you will have watched that and remember it. Also, there did tend to be lots of kickoffs at boxing fights um, between rival football firms who might be supporting one boxer or another. Also, at international cricket matches, um, the races, horse racing, if a couple of different mobs would turn up, a lot of times when you're drinking, etc., it kicks off and um, there's all sorts of carnage. But that was one that was well covered in the news and press. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any other topics around the football scene you want me to um, cover, by all means, put it in the comments. I've got a video coming up soon with Jas, a friend of mine, um, one of the founding members of the Naughty 40 back in the day. And he also used to work the doors at in sorry Blackpool with Steve Sinclair um, and his mob who looked after things there. And it's a bit of a crazy story of when the lads back in the day, the Stoke lads, went up and it all went off with Steve Sinclair and his firm. So we've got that one coming soon as well, as well as all the gangland stuff. Um, like I say, pop in the comments if uh, there's people you want me to cover from any genre within the crime, gangland, etc. And I do always put them on the list. Now, I tend to reply more to comments nowadays on the community posts only because I get so many comments, I can't, I haven't physically got the time to go through every single one. So jump on the community posts and comment on there if you want me to reply, if you want me to definitely reply to you. Okay, take it easy.